Joining us live via Skype is Dr. Dozier Osuji, emergency physician. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you for having me. What do you make of the increasing number of cases being reported on a daily basis in Nigeria? Well, I must say that I'm not surprised. Considering our population and considering some of the strategies that not put in place early enough, I'm not really surprised. In terms of conducting COVID-19 tests, what are the bottlenecks you've identified in the system and how can they be resolved? In terms of conducting the test, the bottlenecks I've identified in the system is that first, um, there's a, a delay in collection of samples. Here in Abuja, it takes a minimum of 24 hours before sample collection can be done. So increasing the number of staff or the number of personnel who can take samples readily is one of the bottlenecks. And I don't think we always have to wait for the um, FCT Health Administration or the NCDC to send their personnel. I think um, staff in different hospitals should be trained on how to collect samples. That is what is being done in other parts of the world. Do you think the, the second bottleneck? Okay, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Right. So go the ahead, second sir. bottleneck I have identified is our testing capacity seems to be below par, comparing it with other countries. And yes, we must compare ourselves with other countries, especially those who may have as limited resources as we do. Yesterday, um, I heard that we now have about 15 testing capa um, testing centers. And our maximum testing capacity is about, minimum is about 3,000 per day. So I'm left to wonder why we are testing way less numbers compared to neighboring Ghana that has only three labs, but have been able to test 80,000 since the onset, whereas Nigeria, we're still under 10,000. Okay. So I believe one of these bottlenecks is the method they are using to do their testing. All right. Do you think the lockdown has achieved the purpose it intended, especially with calls for it to uh, be removed? Definitely, the lockdown has helped because if not for the lockdown, I mean, these numbers would just be would just be a joke compared to what we would have been turning in. The lockdown has helped. It's helping the government and it's helping its agencies to get a wrap around it and know the way forward. It has helped, definitely. Okay, what about the welfare of healthcare workers um, around you? What have you noticed? Is the PPE being made available or is there more you think government can do? Definitely, there's a lot the government can do. And, you know, that's also another part of the bottleneck. Right now, what is happening in the country is that if you have breathlessness, if you have fever, if you have a cough, whether it's COVID or not, you go to most hospitals and they will turn you back. And you will have to move from one hospital to the other. And if this person is in a life-threatening condition, may actually die on their way to the hospital. I don't blame the health care workers that will reject such patients because most times they are not equipped with adequate PPEs to handle these patients. So going forward, I will appreciate if the federal government would not just do a lot in giving healthcare workers' PPEs, but also providing a semblance of guideline so that the average health worker, when he encounters a case that looks like a COVID, he will know the steps to do. He know the steps to take, rather. All right. Thank you very much uh, for your thoughts on the news, and please stay safe. All right. You too.